Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Sing of his glorious name. Alleluia. Give him glorious praise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The parish bulletin found at the entrances and on our webpage contains the music and readings from Mass. Today's Mass intention is for Corinne Wagenbach. The celebrant of this Mass is the Most Reverend Bernard A. Hebda, Archbishop of St. Paul in Minneapolis. Con celebrating at this Mass is Father Eubel, Father Joseph Bambanek, and Father Michael Becker. And assisting at this Mass is Deacon Phil Stewart. The opening hymn will be found at number 444. Hail the Festival Day, number 444. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, what a joy it is to be gathered 
on this third Sunday of Easter to have the opportunity to give praise to our God. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. 
Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he was said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy, were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You might remember that when we gathered here last week and heard the gospel proclaimed, it was the gospel about Thomas's doubting and how it is that he came to believe. Always one of my favorite Sundays of the year, it's Divine Mercy Sunday too. But in, in that account from St. John's gospel, we hear how it is that Jesus so much desired that his followers would believe that he was risen, that he had risen from the dead. Hard for any of us to believe. And so Jesus, in the gospel that we heard last week, shows himself first to the disciples, the apostles, and then on a second occasion to Thomas, and it invites Thomas, knowing that Thomas was unbelieving, to really be able to do that one thing that would help him to believe. It's Jesus' great desire that Thomas and the apostles would believe. We, we hear that in the gospel this evening as well that the deacon just proclaimed. It's, this time it's from St. Luke's gospel. But it's basically the, the, the same experience where we hear how deeply Jesus wants his followers to believe that he is indeed risen from the dead. So not only does he offer to show his hands and his feet, and he, he does that so freely, but then he also, to make sure that they would realize he wasn't a ghost, he eats a piece of fish. For someone like me who doesn't really like fish, that's a big deal, right? But Jesus does that because he wants the disciples, the apostles to believe because he wants us to believe 2,000 years later. And so these evangelists, whether it be John last week or Luke this week, they're telling us this account, they're giving us this eyewitness account so that we too might believe. 
That's Jesus' great desire. We don't have exactly the same advantage that the apostles had in being able to, to see Jesus in that same way. But he's just as earnest, just as determined that we would believe that he's truly risen and that he offers to us a share of his resurrected life in 2024. And so Jesus, the great planner, made sure that he would give to us the sacraments. We'd be able to experience Jesus's presence, most especially in the Eucharist, but they all, each of the sacraments for sure. He gives to us his, his church as well, founds a church so that we would have a mechanism for, for passing on what had been um, so significant to pass on these stories, to pass on the scripture, but also all of the, the teaching that Jesus gives to the apostles as well, that deposit of faith. But most significantly, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus gives to us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks to us when we, when we hear the word of God proclaimed and explained. It's the Holy Spirit who's at work when, when we encounter uh, Jesus in the Eucharist, for example. The, the priest, every time that Mass is, is celebrated, calls down the Holy Spirit upon that bread and wine so that they might become Jesus' body and blood. It's that Holy Spirit that, that helps us to believe. It's the Holy Spirit who really teaches us how it is that we're to act. And it's that same Holy Spirit that acts within the church, that teaching church that, that encourages us now for, for 2,000 years to be able to really appreciate that Jesus is alive, that he rose from the dead, and that he desires for us to recognize that. There's this great union between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That work that Jesus did in the Holy Land 2,000 years ago is continued today by the work of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that our reading, uh, when we read sacred scripture, we often speak of the Holy Spirit as the advocate Today we heard in our second reading that it's Jesus who's the advocate as well. There's that kind of a unity between Jesus and his Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we have to be willing to open up our hearts to the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful to Father Becker and his team who, who month after month have been celebrating these liturgies, these fire on the hill liturgies. As I, I was walking uh, to the cathedral this afternoon and the wind was just picking up. I never look so good when I come here because my hair is a disaster. Huh? It's that wind, but it's the wind of the Holy Spirit that reminds us of the power of God. We have to open our hearts if we want to be able to give witness and if we want to be able to change our lives. In our first reading today, we, we heard how it is that that Holy Spirit already has an impact as we, we hear about Peter standing up and, and proclaiming and he, he's already explaining to others what had been explained to him by Jesus. So he's able to put the resurrection event in the context of all of sacred scripture as he speaks about uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. It's that Holy Spirit acting within him that helps him to understand what Jesus taught as he opened up the scriptures. It's then uh, Peter who's able to speak also about how important it is that each of us would be converted, that we would turn away from sin. We heard that in our, our second reading from the first letter of St. John as well, how important it is that if we're going to say that we know Jesus, that we have to be willing to keep his commandments. Now, sisters and brothers, if you're like me, you know how weak you are. Huh? It's only when the Holy Spirit is working within us that we can anticipate that kind of conversion. It's then that we're able to give a, a credible witness to the world of what Jesus intended. 
were able to go forth and to tell others in a credible way that Jesus is truly risen. It's that work of the Holy Spirit within us that helps us to understand, that gives us the determination and the strength to change our lives. We pray for that gift of the Holy Spirit every time we come for Mass, but most especially in these days of the Easter season, in this time between Easter and Pentecost. We here in the Archdiocese are praying for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, certainly as we strive to respond to Jesus' call to us to be his witnesses. As we celebrate this Eucharistic liturgy this day, this opportunity to give thanks in the most perfect way that we know, thanks to God, we give thanks for that, the gift of Jesus, his risen Son. We give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we offer ourselves to the Lord uh, along with Jesus, that perfect sacrifice, so that he might use us to be his witnesses and going forth into this world that is starving for the good news of Jesus Christ and being able to proclaim that Easter message that Jesus is truly risen. maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In Easter joy and with hope-filled confidence, let us present our needs to the Lord. For the church around the world, may she bring the saving message of Jesus Christ to a broken world by preaching the gospel of joy and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the power of the Holy Spirit, may the fire of God's love be experienced among us so that his glory may be made manifest and we may be changed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they seek peaceful and just solutions to conflict, ones that respect the dignity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those whom God is calling to the priesthood, the diaconate or consecrated life, may they prayerfully consider lives of service to the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civilians who struggle with basic necessities in the war-torn Holy Land, may people of good will never grow weary and continue to pray for peace in the land that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, called home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, especially longtime parishioner Audrey Glenn, may they share in the fullness of joy in, re in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, giver of the gift of new life, please hear and answer these our humble prayers. 
made in the strong and holy name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Cathedral Parish is dependent upon the financial support of her cherished parishioners and many welcome guests. There is a QR code in the Parish Bulletin from which you may donate electronically. You may also use any of the four gold-colored offering drop boxes found at the Selby and Dayton doors just inside the church for your stewardship. We thank you for your generosity. Let us sing number 728, Shepherd of Souls, number 728. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the worlds. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us all for each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Cantate Domino, Alleluia. Cantate Domino, Benedici. to 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few brief prayer announcements, so thank you so much for your attention. As always, we're uh, delighted to have Archbishop Hebda join us. As you may know, each month we've had these special masses with the prayer time afterwards. A different priest or bishop has presided. Uh, Father Becker, I'm so grateful for arranging this all the way through. There's still one more to go on the second Saturday of May. So we thank our special guest musicians as well. So for those of you who wish to remain, uh, there'll be about a five-minute break so the, the screen can come out with the uh, uh, to put out the words for the particular songs. There'll be prayer ministry teams available behind me. They'll explain everything. But if you would like to have a time of intercessory prayer, whatever's on your heart and soul and mind, um, please bring it to those who are here to pray with you today. It's a wonderful opportunity. So that begins at just about five minutes after Mass. This Friday, April 19th, we had a wonderful opportunity at 7.30 p.m. We're going to welcome the choir school from the Cathedral of the Madeleine in Salt Lake City. This is a K-8 school that focuses on music in particular. They're a fantastic choir. They're coming here uh, to sing again Friday at 7.30 p.m. It's a free will offering, a great opportunity. Uh, lift your spirits in this joyous Easter season. Please see the parish website for more information. And as always, we thank you for your participation. A special word of welcome to any who may be visiting us this weekend. Thank you for your strong and continued support of the cathedral. I do encourage you to take a bulletin home with you on your way out to learn more about the parish. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank you, Father Ubo. Very grateful to you and to your staff for the extraordinary hospitality that you offer uh, to all of us as we come to our mother church. Uh, here at the cathedral. Very grateful to our music ministers this day, uh, to the fantastic servers from the cathedral, um, and indeed to uh, Deacon and uh, to our Master of Ceremonies, Greg, as well. I look forward to praying with you after Mass uh, today as well. Um, I uh, certainly ask you to uh, continue to pray for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, throughout our archdiocese. It's significant always. Uh, certainly uh, be praying. I, I noticed a couple of our seminarians are here. Please pray for them as they prepare for uh, their ordinations as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Let us sing number 449, this joyful Easter tide, number 449. 